Hello, hello, everybody. I want you to smack the table. To wake you up. Uh, and welcome to the Full Dark No Stars Riverdale podcast. Today, we watched season two, episode 21. 21. All secrets revealed this episode. We got out here. So, so much. I guess we forgot to mention the stinger from the previous episode last where time. Fans. Where... No, oh. not that, because we don't care about that plot line. Oh, okay. When Betty realizes that the Black Hood is probably her father, accidentally leaks that her and Cheryl like broke into his like Airbnb. That's right. And confronted him, being like, we're going to get like go to the uh place where it started, cryptic thing. Mm-hmm. We'll have a showdown. And Black Hood is like, instead of doing that, I'm gonna go try. I'm just gonna go Cheryl. kill Cheryl. <laughs> so, so knock, knock, knock. Cheryl opens the door. Man with axe. She does typical horror movie scream, which she does so well. She's very good. She's at this. very. She's good. very good at this. So, you know, we start this episode. Yeah, this is how on. we go. We go. We go in. We go in. Chase ensues. Not a very long one. No. Cheryl no. out the window. Gets to the. Luckily, she made it to her archery set and hunting cape. I and, love and, uh, that the Black Hood walks out of the house. We're like, where'd she go? And she's just there, bow in hand, drawn. And I'm like, why? Did, what? Yeah. why? With, with, with the cloak and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she's decked out. And then proceeds to shoot him. <laughs> like, I was so worried that wasn't going to happen. I'm she so happy you did. This she shoots this man. She shoots Calls up Betty and he's, she's just like, I've shot him. He's now a wounded animal driven by pure instinct. Yeah. Be careful, cousin. She's, <laughs> she's like, do you think you could be my dad? She's like, judging by your, but ju- judging by the waistline alone, I think it's very possible. <laughs> like, yeah, very good. <laughs> oh, Cheryl's so good, dude. I love Cheryl. Best character. She really is. Best character. This episode somehow pops off more, more. than the previous mm-hmm. one. We got a lot going on. Because now we have like the release of Fang. Fangs. From from prison. And mm-hmm. of course you have people all over either wanting to protect him or crucify him for the murder of Midge and everything happening. And he is shot yep. by Midge's mom. By Midge's mom. But we don't know oh, who it is at first. Oh, yeah, we don't. We think it, well, we don't think it's Reggie. We know it's not. We know it's not. No, but it's, but they it's all fine. think he is. And it's then everyone. So much conspiracy. Hiram ended up hiring the ghoulies yeah. to start the turf war again with the serpents mm-hmm. so that they can kill each other and he can take over the land. Penny is back, certified lawyer. And true doing whatever it's pretty good and has beaten the shit out of jughead that's jughead's true. dead everyone because because jughead was like i'm gonna offer myself to you As if tribute. we don't do a war yeah and then she's like we're gonna beat you up and then do a war <laughs> so they beat the so they, they like they 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 beat him very bad they destroy yeah. him yeah um what else happened in this episode that's the only oh, no, important no, no. stuff. Well, we got Hal like revealing full on. I love that he takes out a stupid film projector. Yeah, and he has this ugly home movie of like him saying like a mantra as a little babby child. Yeah, because his mom's like, we can do better. Hypnotizing him into being a serial murderer as well. Yeah, crazy shit. Wild. We went. Off, love dude. that Alice is just like okay. She's like. Mm. I fucked FP and his dick is so much better than yours. And then he starts to strangle her. Yeah. And then we beat Kinda him. Kind of lit. We, then we lit. double tap him with the, yeah, with the yeah. shovel from the for that fireplace. Pretty, it's very good. It's pretty very good. good. But also, there was a black hood in Archie's house that shot yes. Archie's dad. <sighs> at the same time that Hal was being the black hood in his own home. Is how the real Black Hood probably probably, but he. Like, um, but also, it's a really easy costume to replicate. True. So, because Archie's been attacked by other Black Hoods before mm-hmm. as well. So, and it's I'm like, pretty sure the accomplice is gonna be the uncle. Yeah, Cheryl's uncle has mm-hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. Has to be right. The only other option. Yeah. So much. Uh, 
the son of the guy that Hiram killed way earlier in the yeah. season finally came back and is like, I'm going to kill his wife and daughter. And we got to see Hermione to fucking defend fucking herself. Grab a gun. The blicky in his ass. It was so good. Gun this man down dead. And then Hiram shows up. He's like, oh, I'm so showy. You will my actions the consequences no he didn't he oh, walked no. in and was like what happened and they're like the body's over there you can check it if you want doesn't ask if the girls are okay yeah. beelines to confirm body and comes back and is like all right i should probably yeah like Oops. say i'm yeah. sorry mm-hmm. like and and veronica's just like hey dad fuck you right right i'm excited to see where it goes I there's really one am. more episode left this season i know it's so exciting. very exciting very exciting it's so good Guys, guys, you should keep up with the trash fire with us. Yeah, I'm just please. saying. It's, I'm it's just saying. It's it's very good. Mm-hmm. We'll do a weekly discussion if that's what you guys want. Right. Show, right. Share your thoughts in the comments below. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a brand new day. It is a brand new day for Cami Boy. The sun is high. All the birds are singing that you're gonna die. Okay. You remember that? You remember that? Oh, Neil Patrick Harris and Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. You remember that? I was never into it. it was I remember funny. it. But like all the Tumblr girls were into it. They, they were. And it was I'm very like, Tumblr-y. No. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. I had old Nathan Fillion and Felicia Day when she used to do stuff. You know? <laughs> she used to do stuff. She used to do things. <laughs> Look, Nathan Fillion's going to be in a movie franchise. Is he? Yeah. What's he doing? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Maybe I just haven't been paying <laughs> And Neil Patrick Harris is always very really eh, eh with me. That's fair. Um, mainly out of expectations, where mm. everyone goes like, you have to like Neil Patrick Harris, says every girl in high school. Right. And so I'm like, like, you can just die. I mean, the only thing he ever did that was good was be the music meister. In it's Batman, facts, the though. The vault. It's facts, <laughs> but... though. <laughs> Uh, or like my favorite, <laughs> no, my favorite actual thing he's ever done is like, uh, was in the 2012, 2011 hmm. Muppets movie. Yeah. Reasonable. Uh, when the, like, they're doing like the show and you just cut to Neil Patrick Harrison and he's just on the phone with someone going like, no, I don't know why I'm not the one hosting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. What a good movie. <laughs> 2011 Muppets movie was gold. It's kind of good. It's kind of good. I kind of like that one. Like Amy Adams and Jason Segel. Mm-hmm. I think this is mm-hmm. He do be a bird. He do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that was the good movie Amy Adams was in. Shame about <laughs> Stand Enchanted of... was fine. No, shame about Stand of Meal. <laughs> 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 Stand of meal. Stand of meal. With with Newperman. <laughs> with Newperman and Noah Shane. Newperman's not in that movie. It's Stand of Meal. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who, who can't decipher Josh's audio hieroglyphics, he's, he's referring to Man of Steel, the Superman film with... Uh, they never Henry say Cavill. Superman in the movie. No. We don't he, know if it's a Superman movie. He's, yeah, it's just Man of, it's titled it's just, Man of Steel. Yeah. The S on his chest stands for hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a symbol oh, for hope where I'm from. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that shit's so cringe. That shit's so fucking cringe. Oh. I can't. Oh shit. The hardest thing about the uh, <laughs> peculiar argument from Devin was that he completely empathized with Cammy Boy. <sighs> you can't imagine being in that situation, made to take medication that changes him so fundamentally that he's not in full control of his movements or even his breathing. The coyote is justified in being angry, sad, childish, and sometimes outright spiteful. That doesn't mean that it isn't unsettling. Uh, seeing the Cameron lash out and cry in ways Devin had never seen him uh, come close to before. At points, it feels like he's watching the deconstruction of a life in real time. 
It leaves his stomach feeling hollow and sick, uh, like it did days after Brian had to had a go at it. The thought of the old bear makes Devin so angry that now he wishes the man was still alive. At least then there'd be a chore, a chance, a chance for him to try and knock out of the last few of his teeth in count, in count, court, in court during the victim impact statement or something. And the stress continues to build as Cameron's condition remains unstable. What kind of fruits we got over here? Some of them look like little potatoes. Those potatoes? Uh, the the, the little oranges? ones in the middle. These oranges or potatoes? They look like potatoes. Mm. Mm. You have this plant dying over here as well. Yeah. It was That's nice. Fine. to in, in April, yeah. it was thriving. It was. It now, was. It now, now it's Wilton, some might say. Wilton. Also, yeah. the powerful, the Radrif boys are over there. You see him over there on the left? The transfer was scheduled <laughs> for November, and Devin is trying to type up an extremely yeah. apologetic and professional email to explain the situation, and also request a possible video meeting to delay the transfer. It's a reasonable request, especially considering the state of the world at the moment. Cool. Mm -hmm. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, his breathing picks up speed. Confused, Devin watches at, as the edges of his vision begins to darken. He can't figure out why he suddenly feels as if he's going to pass out. The first thing that comes to Devin's mind is Arturo's older brother, who died of a pulmonary embolism after a surgery. Hmm. Uh, the one that are already talked about casually while high, even though Devin knows he's still devastated by it. Devin stands up from his desk, walking, uh, then slinking, sinking, sinking to the ground as the room spins. Cam, I, I need help, please. I, I can't. Uh, before he can stop himself, he blurts out Cameron's name, simultaneously questioning whether that's a good idea or not. Cameron sees his boyfriend uh, die in front of him, uh, won't exactly help his mental state, so it's better uh, that he's probably sleeping like a rock right now. He pulls out his phone, and as he's on his knees, having pressed the 9 and 1, before a very groggy, sedated Cameron comes in, his expression of bleary confusion turning to fear. Don't worry, I just, I just... Can't catch a fucking breath? A look of recognition comes over the coyote's face, and kneeling in front of Devin, he presses the bear's head against his chest. Devin, it's okay. We're okay. Breathe with me. Devin's not sure if that's what the problem is, but after just a few seconds, it stops. Are you okay? I've never seen you like that before. Devin sees Cameron's neck a tick twitch multiple times, and he immediately feels like an idiot. Here he is, having a stupid, breathless panic attack while Cameron is having vocal tics that forces him to almost pass out from not being able to breathe. Devin tries to let go to get him to go back to bed, but Cameron sleeps on the sofa in the study, and determined to be there if Devin needs him again. While Devin feels like he should be the one doing the comforting right now, he is glad that Cameron is there. So that's what the coyote feels like when he's panicking. A scary moment, but Devin doubts he'll be, uh, he'll let the uh, feeling sneak up on him again, now that he's familiar with it. He had considered therapy and medication, like he's constantly trying to find the Cameron, but find for Cameron, but a part of him has to admit that he's scared too. Besides, he's not bad enough to need help, to need that help. He'll settle on what's always helped him deal with stress in the past which is being active. Exercise with a... Uh, will be good for both of them, uh, actually. Once he sends his email, he'll figure out how to renew both of their gym memberships, assuming the place is even still open. What, just have, like, a trot around the block? Yeah, just do a little runny run. Oh, he tired. Look at this man. Look at this man. Just grab, just grab that moozle. And just wiggle him around. <laughs> Devin steps out of the gym, taking a deep breath out of the frigid, f 
February air. Mm-hmm. There aren't many cars or people on the street, and uh, not this early on a Saturday morning. Probably because they're sleeping in like they should be. Devin instinctively begins to reach out for Cameron's paw, but he's not there. He hasn't been there for a while now, almost a year. Well, what used to be uh, is there, at home, in the urn sitting on Cameron's old dresser, along with all of the coyote's other little possessions that Devin had kept. It hurts even more because he's almost certain that Cameron would love would have loved this city. He would have uh, he would do a better job remembering that Cameron isn't right next to him if quit thinking about me like I'm dead. I'm not. I'm thinking about you like you're physically gone. I do miss being physically present. I guess I could be dead, but it doesn't really matter. You're not dead. I'm just, like, your vessel now. That's such a creepy word. Just, like, say I'm, like, your passenger. Uh, By the way, you reek. It's Saturday, so I don't have to work. Besides, I'm not taking a shower when their air dryer temperature is room temperature. I mean, I didn't say I didn't like it. It's, uh, from a fresh workout. Devin grunts as he makes his way through the parking lot towards his car. You are pushing yourself really hard, to be honest. Take it easier next time. Taking it easy is what got you sh- hurt. Anyway, the more echoes we can kill off, the better. I doubt we can have that much of an impact, Devin. This shit is old, ancient, even. It's a lot bigger than us in a lot of different ways. I just want to see how all this works out. If it can be done, maybe we can tell others about it. Start a movement. To kill other haunted places at the source? But how many people have their dead boyfriend in their head, giving them psychic abilities? Well, I won't tell them that part. Just the psychic part. Ah, gotta take credit for my ability? Hey, I'm learning to fight too. You see how much I've been bulked up. Devin flexes his muscles underneath his winter coat and uh, padding, uh, yeah, coat and padding. Muscles he wishes he'd had when he fought Brian. I didn't know you could uh, punch ghosts, and I wish you'd get a different coat. Uh, He beats on you way too hard. I knew what I was getting into. Anyway, remember about the source. Usually it's some shitty person feeding these places. Oh well, punching real people sounds worse, actually. Either way, it's all a good workout. You should try... Devin catches himself halfway through saying it. Even though he knows it's coming, even though he tries to stop it, the imaginary what the imagery of Cameron's ruined face flashes through his mind. He should just be happy that the coyote is still talking to him. That he's still with him. Kind of. I miss you. Please don't do that, Devin. I'm right here. I want to hold you. You basically are, and I'm giving you a big emotional hug right now. I might as well be feeling out your muscles too, because you have bulked up nicely. Devin laughs and wipes his eye. Thanks, Cam. Cameron watches all of this, but not the Cameron in Devin's head. The Cameron that avoided the shotgun, that survived. He's had these dreams a few times. At first, he simply thought them to be a traumatic nightmare from a traumatic event. But this is the one, this is one of those dreams that feel so real, he almost can't tell he's dreaming. They're not really nightmares either. Usually, they're mundane, kind of funny, kind of sad. The dreaming Cameron, for some reason, doesn't trust this passenger Cameron at all. This version of himself feels off, almost like there isn't even the soul to go with him. Otherwise, he sounds and acts just like he does, or did, uh, before the diagnosis. It makes him wonder if he'd uh, trade off given the opportunity. Cameron isn't waking up, so with little else to do, he reaches out mentally and digs into the other Cameron a deeper, a bit deeper. What he sees lasts, lasts only a second. 
After tearing out Brian's throat, this Cameron immediately began communicating with Devon. It's not an illness, not like what Cameron has, but it's still... Echo. It's part of that town, and Cameron doesn't want this Devon to... <laughs> Yo. It's fine. D Devin, he's back. A feeling difficult to describe comes over Cameron. It's something from the dead Cameron, that entity that acts and talks like Cameron. That thing that's currently attached to that Devin. We just keep coming back here, dude. It's homely. Sure. <laughs> He's tied up, all, uh, bound with rope, with a foul-tasting rag gagging him. The big bear has been gone for over an hour, but no matter how hard he tries, he can't him can't uh, make the zip ties and chains move. And then his stomach turns, and the meal uh, Brian had brought him at the bar starts to come back up. He's going to throw up, but he's chained down on his back, with a gag in his mouth. He's going to throw up, and then it's going down. <laughs> going to drown. Uh, vomit floods his mouth. Cameron leaps out of bed, one paw over his muzzle. Oh, excuse me. He stubs his toe horrifically on the doorframe of the bathroom, uh, bending back the claw that is, uh, it's left bleeding, almost ripped out. But he makes it to the toilet in time to retch up the small amount of whatever it is in his stomach. His name was Alan, a rat, Cameron thinks. But the coyote can't remember the last name, the last name of the man who drowned in his own vomit. Cameron sobs, both for himself and for the poor young rat that lived a short, hard life, only for it to end by choking on the shitty food Brian lured him in with. After a minute, the coyote calms down and listens, thankful that Devin is an, uh, is an incredibly heavy sleeper. What he'd seen definitely happened, and even though the police stopped trying to interview him after learning about the schizophrenia diagnosis, he would still put in an anonymous tip tomorrow. Cameron knows there's at least twice as many victims that the police know about, and plans to report every single one that he sees. Hmm. We going? Ah! Epic. <laughs> That's what the beer says. <laughs> it do, it do say that. It's fine. A half a year ago, Cameron finally starts to feel as if he's starting to, to live life again. Not his old life, but a new, unfamiliar one. Uh, tapering down his meds along with exercising definitely helped which is why he came here with Devin to visit Arturo. When he sees his old friend, he feels a bit better, just based on the shape of his amalgamation. It's a bit more full, and while it's still damaged, it's also at peace. Cameron uh, knows that feeling. It's difficult now, and he accepts that. But he's still Arturo, which the cat has to come to accept too. He's just different now, changed, like everything changes. A terrible, dramatic change, but one that can happen to anyone. Things always tend to get worse, but then they tend to get better too. And Cameron knows this is by just by looking at Arturo. While the coyote did just uh, want to see his old friend, he also wanted to know a few other things. His methods are morally questionable, but he justifies it since he's tried since he's tired of being kept in the dark. An hour before they get there, Cameron eats a piece of chocolate from the backpack, uh, be brought. I think it's supposed to be here. No, no, backpack be brought. Backpack be brought. It uh, do be brought. <laughs> it be brought, everyone, for their uh, stay at the motel. And Devin complains that Cameron says that it was the last one, but the carry knows the bear would lose his mind if he knew what, uh, what exactly Cameron did. And that was a microdosing psilocybin. Yeah. Stupid, idiotic, unbelievable uh, when it could cause him severe lasting damage. Idiot. It might have uh, been what triggered the schizo 
schizophrenia, yeah, but his ability increased tenfold even on his tiny account. Besides, it made him feel better. Of course, Devin, uh, he tells Devin when, when more time has passed, but the bear has shown almost zero interest in the paranormal as of late. No more ghost adventure blog. No, no more. These Damn. are our ghost adventures. <laughs> Please, though. I'm going to find that on Blu-ray for you. No. You're going to love ghost adventures. No. It'll be like catching up with old friends. Nah, buy me all of Cheers instead. It'll be funnier. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be funny. It would be funny. Or what was that one that you thought about picking up the nanny? The nanny. I do like the nanny. <laughs> oh my god. Make fun of him, everyone. No, no. The nanny's great. <laughs> Okay, no, The Nanny's not a good show, but Fran Drescher's awesome. Oh my God. Okay, so shut the hell up. I'll hear no criticism. I think I'd rather own all of Frasier. Of course. Yeah. It's because Frasier's a good show. <laughs> a classy show for classy, for classy individuals. highbrow, educated individuals. <laughs> Such as myself. Obviously. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> it's true. Well, maybe he'll uh, just tell him he's taking it for the mood lift. For now, he just wants to take in the emotions and conversation. Oh, yeah. He's a cutie. Yeah, we all hanging out. Yeah. Look at him. <sighs> he's wearing one of those kind of button ups. Come on. What does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> what are those kind of button ups? What? Yeah. A short sleeve button up? That comes off as just like too gay. <laughs> Is that how that works? <laughs> no, no, no. Back me up, everyone. Like, you, you know, like that kind of fashion. <laughs> It's just a button-up, Josh. Mm, it reads different. Okay, sure. It reads different. <laughs> oh, I'll believe you. I'll believe you. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to do is get rid of this damn limp. That's what people notice most if I'm not talking. The Cameron smiles pleasantly, despite the fact that Arturo is more guarded and fortified mentally than anyone else he's met, which is the last thing he'd expected. I actually didn't even notice. Ah, well, you will next time you see me walk anyway. I, I hear you're, uh, you're working on your masters, Devin. Every stutter, every struggle feels like a physical blow to Cameron, uh, but he tries not to show it. He knows Artie doesn't want uh, useless pity right now, but... Uh, and Cameron always hated it, too. Uh, yep. About the University of Deseret. Deseret? Mm hmm Not dessert? No. Not desert? No. Deseret. Mm hmm mm hmm Sweet! In what? Uh, a mecha... Me mechatronics? Mechamatronics? He's gonna build the Gundam. He's going to... My father never even hit me twice. <laughs> pretty good. Which which Gundam would Devin uh, would pilot? Would Devin pilot? Which one? Oh, I mean, he would be that guy that's like, yo, G Gundam's cool. He would. I he was would thinking be... the same fucking thing. He, he would like G Gundam, and you would have Cammy be like... I like turn A. I like turn A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, like, Devin can only watch, like, one or two episodes before he starts nodding off. Yeah. You know? Like... Just like, yeah. <laughs> no, I see. I, he would see. Devin would like G Gundam or, um, which one is the, or Wing? No, he wouldn't. You like don't it. think he'd like he Wing? Would, he would remember Wing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a difference. But, but G Gundam, <laughs> is he a Shining Finger type? <sighs> Look, it's still good. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> shining Finger! <laughs> that it shit's good. great. It's, that it's shit's kind so of great. actually really good. Put the horse in the cockpit. 
Hey man, you just gotta set it on the on the circle, and it's gonna give you a nice little skin tight suit. Yep. The robotics. No, of course. And how's that? Um, the, the, you know, how's how's that progressing? Good. I just finished my first semester. Yeah, and uh, the place you're working at, it, you're, you're financing it. That, that's really quick. I'm at the same company. It was always part of the plan uh, once we moved. I still gotta graduate from them to reimburse my tuition, though. No pressure. I don't know how he, he how he does it all. Work, school, cooking, gaming. He's a, He's gamer. a gamer. He is a gamer. He does play. He's on Destiny 2 every night. I don't know. He kind of strikes me as a Rainbow Six Siege kind of guy. <laughs> I feel like Devin plays Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> a real game for real gamers. A real game for real gamers. He used to like Dead by Daylight, but now he's afraid. <laughs> he's like, nope, give me the gun. Give me the gun mans. You don't think it was because of all the uh, the IP drop-ins that oh, he, true, he yeah. backed out of the game? Yeah, that's the one. He's like, ew. It ruined the game. Get that shit out of here. They ruined the game when they put Lee on Kennedy. Now it's just a bunch of coomers. <laughs> okay, but anytime I watch a female VTuber play Dead by Daylight, they're always playing as <laughs> Like nearly every time without fail. That tracks. That I'm sounds like, correct. I'm like, Maury. <laughs> Maury, you have good taste. I get it. But... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Do you, do you have to be a walking stereotype sometimes? Absolutely. 100%. And you're good at all of it. That's just like him. He's uh, partied and drank the night before a final. And ace it while hungover. Cameron is close enough to Devin to see the skin flush under his fur. While some might find Devin to be overly humble, it has more to do with a sort of imposter syndrome. Cameron knows it must be awkward to be praised for not having to study or work as hard as his fellow students and co-workers. Despite that, Cameron still feels proud knowing his boyfriend is already inching into leadership position at a company. He has no doubt the bear will be doing incredible things in his career. So, how are things going for you? What are you doing these days? Weren't you thinking about going back to work uh, at that specialized school? <laughs> yup. Uh, Spectrum uh, Solutions Academy. And I'm already back. Uh, went back as, as soon as I got vaccinated. Uh, still in uh, RBT. Uh, working with kids with, uh, with low-functioning autism. How is it? Great! Uh, I was almost like... It was almost like going back home. Uh, I'm supposed to have, like, two clients before they've uh, got about uh, five on me now. <laughs> Uh, they were so happy to see me. Uh, they can tell uh, something's a bit off about me, though. This sounds a bit rough. Is your recovery still going well? Artie visibly draws himself back a, uh, in a bit. I like to call it a process these days. Most of the recovery is over, I think. Oh, I see. It's silence just for a few seconds. Cameron's slow response is mainly due to being distracted, having finally deciphered Artie's general's feelings, uh, thoughts, emotions. In that moment, that guard had slipped, and Cameron realized Artie knows he's psychic. Of course, he told him that, um, but now he knows. Uh, now he knows it, truly believes it, and for the past two years, he realizes how much of this happened because of Cameron. Arturo is afraid of Cameron. The cat seems, uh, senses the strangeness, the offness of Cameron is, of who Cameron is now. Arturo also wonders if it's uh, possible that uh, the coyote brought a piece of Echo into the house with him. The shadow entity, it entered him and never came out as far as Arturo knows. Who's to say it's not still there? Maybe it's like a, a management phase? That's what Cam calls it anyway, right honey? Dev, probably confused by the tension, tries to add more to the conversation. Oh, that's right. That piece of shit hurt you. Uh, hurt you pretty bad, too. 
Yeah, really. It's the schizophrenia I was diagnosed with afterwards that I'm still trying to manage. Cameron suddenly decides to just tell Arturo about his own struggles, if only to look for more sympathy, understanding. It seems un, uh, unfair not to tell him, for some reason anyway. For a moment, Arturo's expression becomes one of genuine sadness. Oh, I'm really, really sorry to hear that, Cameron. Was it from what happened? I, I hope it wasn't the weed. N no, I think it's what happened after that that pushed me over the edge. Well, I hate that. But it's accurate. <laughs> but you love that that. Mm. Love a good that that. Maybe we should just have like a line across the top of the word. To say that it's... It's like double that word. Mm. I could save you know. some space, you know. But it's just that Like that. after that pushed me over the edge. That pushed, After that pushed me over the edge. Yeah, you know. It gives it that that yeah. feeling, that emphasis. I understand. I get what you're saying. Uh, I see. Um, that makes sense. Do they think it would uh, have happened anyway, eventually? Cameron struggles. Maybe. They think I might have been in a, a pro pro -dromal, pro -dromal mm -hmm. state for years. It's obvious I was on the brink for a while. But he'll never know. For that moment, though, he feels like he and Artie have made a connection. Artie understands that they have a completely uh, different problems, but they're both life-changing, and the two of them are bound to these problems for the remainder of their lives. But then, uh, Artie senses that darkness, that bit of echo emanate from Cameron again, and he mentally recoils. It's been a rough road, but we managed to find some stability at the end of last year. God, it's such a pain in the ass trying to settle on the right meds. That took Maria a few years, I think. Uh, hey, Maria! There's some rustling from the hallway, and a young leopard comes into the hall, the living room, Maria clearly having been very nearby in the hall. How do you go? Oh, why do you go? I just wanted to give you guys some space. We were just talking about how long it can take to adjust to the meds. Maybe you can give him some advice. Aw. She leans in to give Arturo a kiss, and Arturo takes it without a single hint of embarrassment or annoyance. Another solid rock in Artie's life, and one that will stay until the end. While Cameron would normally never invade someone's mind like this... Oh, excuse me. The Coyote doubts he'll have many chances to do so again in the future, and he needs to know if Artie's on a good track or not. Maria turns to Cameron, and because they themselves have been friends for years, even a little longer than he's known Devin, he can tell that this is weirdly set up. Oh, yeah, antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, it feels like I've been through almost all of them. Y yeah it makes me want to sleep all day and also uh, tear my own fur out and crawl out of my skin. I just want to smack him. Okay, sure. <laughs> He's trying to have a moment. I, anytime I see like a cat that makes that face, it's just smack. Smack. <laughs> it's what you deserve. <laughs> smack. You do it to your cats. That's kind of true. See? Kind of true. Can't den can't even deny it. <laughs> Cameron likes uh, uh, Maria a lot, and just like Devin and Arturo, they slip back into the old swing of things. It's nice, but he can't help but notice now that he's been swept out of the conversation with Arturo. Anyway, the main reason I went back to work this early is because I, I, I needed something normal. Sure, things are harder now. Stuttering, a memory of shit, can't really depend on the right side of my body anymore. But fuck, it is nice not being cooped up here living on disability. But the only thing uh, work has complained about is that I, I, I guess my uh, inability or inhibi in in inhibitions mm -hmm. are a bit lower than there used to be. I swear I'm not trying to be a dick, but I haven't even noticed that. 
Nokia, they said something about it. too many words, too little tact, like three years ago, so I I'm pretty sure it's just me. I can kind of tell that it might be uh, affecting you now, but sometimes it's hard to tell the side effects from symptoms of psychosis, especially the residual negative emotion uh, symptoms. <laughs> I mean, positive symptoms are obvious, but making your thoughts flow normally again, making yourself want to go back outside, talk to people, live, they tend to come back last. Sometimes it comes back a bit different. Sometimes it doesn't come back at all. Now, while he tries to hold a conversation about psychotropic medication with Maria, he realizes how much things have changed. In fact, if Cameron's visions hold true, this will be the one of the last uh, of a handful of times he'll speak to Artie. It hurts. It leaves Cameron feeling a bit, uh, a bit, a deep pit of guilt, shame, and even a little anger, but uh, mostly because it's unfair and he can't blame anyone. But as he watches his old friend laugh and talk to Devin, almost like what happened never happened. Cameron sees a long, solid friendship ahead of them, and he's happy for that. Cameron realizes, even without uh, having a mind threat to read minds, that Maria is specifically there to keep Cameron distracted, uh, to keep him away from Arturo. That finally uh, shuts. They finally. Uh, that finally shuts up the uh, psychic part of Cameron's brain. Rather than leaving a hollow feeling, he's left feeling like he's been punched. <laughs> they are treating him like a monster. Like he's, like he's the one. The final thought he receives is from Maria, and deep down under her concern for Cameron's diagnosis, she's wondering if he's prodding at Arturo's mind. Arturo can sense him. His own sensitivity is subtle, almost too, uh, too understated to be picked up on, but it's there, and that's why he feels like Cameron is carrying Echo with him. Cameron is mainly worried that Arturo knows what he's doing right now, and his uh, neck and cheeks become warm as he feels like he's been caught in the act. Maria motions, uh, mentions something about how she has a uh, tardive dyskinia, and Cameron focuses uh, back at the conversation, genuinely curious if it's gotten better for her this, with time. And that's how the rest of the afternoon plays out. The reason he's only s he'll only see Arturo two or three more times in his life isn't because of Arturo or Maria. It's because Cameron knows he can't come back here and cause them stress like this. Cameron is no longer a part of or welcome in their lives, and he won't impose himself again. Despite the hurt from learning their true feelings about him, Arturo's future is, if he has to sum it up, a happy one. Hmm. Big sad. Big sad? Big sad. Mm. Ooh, snow. Mm. Yeah, some, some snow. snow. Look at this, it's March. In March. March of 2023. Ooh, so close. That's like around the time this came out, I think. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. It's caught back up. Oh my god, we're in... Wait, March? Snow? Is that a thing? And some places. Yeah. 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 Like Antarctica. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if they're up north, like, I'm pretty sure like Washington probably has snow in March. Canada, definitely. Yeah, and in the Arctic. Well, yeah. <laughs> Duh, but they're not in the Arctic. Yeah, but you know, they need to be included too. I, sure. Who else is going to include them? No one. No one gives a <laughs> shit. No one gives a There fuck. are people that live there, damn it. Sure. Gotta, gotta hang out with the Pengies. They are pretty good. Yeah, right? Uh, time continues on in its uh, steady, unrelenting march, and it brings with it both good and bad. The pandemic falls into the background. Political instability comes to the forefront. Money becomes tighter. But the world keeps moving, as it tends to do. 
it still leaves Devin more breathless at the uh, idea that he'd change their lives in one week. Well, he has uh, never, yeah, never really uh, personally hated anyone to the point that uh, he just wanted to hurt them. Oh, he does now. But that person is dead. He got the easy way out. For the first year, Devin wasn't sure what he'd, uh, how he'd continue his life. Cameron was either always sedated to the point of almost becoming unresponsive, or angry and sad to the point that he'd just sit in the bathroom and cry. Why the bathroom? Why not? It's a place of privacy that is confined. Sometimes that helps. Um, if you piss and shit, it's right there. In the <laughs> toilet, you know. <laughs> If you're in the middle of a cry and you're like, fuck, I got a shit, you could get up on the toilet and stick up the bathroom and then lay on the floor and cry. You could at least, like, be taking a shower or something. That's like, true. It'd be one thing to... Maybe, maybe run that's... Your, run yourself a bath. Put some, like, salts in there. Mm -hmm. Put and some then, scented candles. And then just cry. Uh, get yourself a nice plate of grilled cheese. Very important for the bath. Very important. <laughs> you gotta get a little floaty for the bath so you can set your plate on. Your yeah, yeah, exactly. You have a plate on top of a small pool ring. Yep. That just like floats sits there in front of oh, you. Oh, it's such a good idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're going to be sad and depressed, be sad and depressed in style. In style, yeah. Right? Come on, guys. <clears throat> uh, and knowing Cameron wanted to be dead, that he'd given up so much that he ever told the bear he'd take opioids again if he could. And so, Dev started doing things he didn't want to do, uh, checking Cameron's drawers, pockets, and his the size of his closet when he wasn't around. He's angry at the medical professionals who sent Cameron home because he simply had instructive thoughts. Intrusive. Intrusive, not instructive. No, I, I mean, mean they're like, kind of instructive. Kind of, yes, like they're, right? they're, they're they're very instructive. Yeah, actually, they're, they're telling you, you know? they're instructing you in how to do something. Yeah, yeah. But people call them intrusive because they want to be rude. Right. Uh, <laughs> they should be called instructive, instructive thoughts. thoughts. Yeah. That way, it's uh, you know, not positive nor negative. Nor negative. Yeah, it's See, just it's instructions. Not, you know. Right. Right. This had relieved Cameron, though Devin was unsure. In fact, he knew it wasn't right, but Cameron was so happy, and it seemed to stop the episode. But then, over the next two days, he was in a deep, psychotic state. His intrusive, instructive thoughts <laughs> were actually thought in sec in insertions? Mm -hmm. Insertions. Okay. He got inceptioned. Whoa! Never watched that movie. Uh, and by the time they got back to the hospital, he was screaming that he was actually dead. He accused Devin of planting speakers in the walls and cameras in the mirrors, uh, which he shattered. <laughs> Over the first month, it was a normal sight to see Cameron sitting up in bed, brushing away the non-existent bugs, completely unresponsive to anything Devin would say. But that's two years behind them now, and Cameron is finally starting to really live and become someone who seems to enjoy life again. Because while the positive symptoms of delusions, hallucinations, and depersonalizations has been practically absent over the past year, the negative symptoms lingered. Devin had read that the, the, the read about that over and over again. Lack of motivation, lack of interest in things that once gave pleasure, lack of expressive emotions, and moments of confusion and disorganized thought. It was the anhedonia. Mm hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All diseases are. They're ooh. Yeah, they're all, all diseases are super ooh, ooh guys. Yeah, remember, guys. <laughs> Everything you got, disorders, diseases. They're all very ooh. -oo. What are what are the fursonas of all of these? Oh my god! <laughs> They're all cats. They're all different They're kinds of cats. All different all breeds of, of cats. All of them. Sorry. <laughs> if it ends in ya, it's a cat. It's a cat. Okay, I get it. I Easy. Get it. Uh, that scared Cameron the most. It scared Devin too, because what's a life with life worth? living if you don't want to do the things you trained and aspired to do most of your life. 
Despite being able to listen to music again, Cameron decided a few months back to finally hang up his guitar. Cameron's pause is still weak and is still uh, has a, a slight tremor to it when he holds it up. We'll just move on to a different instrument. You do pedal, like pedal guitar, steel, lap guitar. Yeah, you, like Cammy Boy, you've got options. Mm -hmm. Like, you really do. Play a guitar. That's also cool. Yeah. Come on. You just have to push buttons. Yeah, yeah, and just have less buttons on yours, mm -hmm. so you don't have to, like, do as much. You'll have less range, but, like, you know, it's fine. Uh, but Cameron hadn't uh, uh, touched the keyboard in years either. Damn. Cammy. Damn it. Well, time to learn the uh, tambourine. Yeah. Yeah, and you can even get ones that you like wrap on your wrist so you could. Yep. Yeah, see? It's fine. It's fine. Leaving it unplugged and dusty in the basement. The, slight, the sight made Dev, uh, uh, Devin far more sad than it did Cameron. He still wonders if he'd been more of an advocate for Cameron. Maybe pushed the uh, pushed for further observation. They could have stopped the uh, psychosis before it truly spiraled. Maybe he'd be his old self. Oh, that's cute. Look at them. Look at them. Cute. That's super cute. It is. What's wrong? You reading my mind again? Never. No. I can read your face. And Devin was, <laughs> doesn't want to bring uh, down Camran's mood. He's the one that wanted to make out and to come out, not make out. <laughs> I mean, like, probably, but also, like... <sighs> but he's cute. <laughs> he's a big old bear. Big old on. Yeah. Uh, to come out and walk around in the snow. And if Cameron wants to do something engaging and active, Devin will do it with him. It is strange that they got so much of it in March, and it probably would be the last snowfall. I'm just realizing how out of shape I am. Do you think I'm starting to get a gut? Like, good. a bad one? Good, 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 good. <laughs> Aren't you on the slimmer side for a bear nearly nearing 30? Uh, Cameron makes a point of looking at Devin's midsection, and then prods through it, making the bear huff. Oh. It is kind of squishy. Devin blushes. You caught me by surprise, and you just got done saying I wasn't fat. You're not fat, you're a bear. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sometimes that's just how it be. Sometimes that's just how it be. I just don't think I'd feel the uh, pudge through your coat. Cameron tries again, but as expected, Devin is tensing up, and there's a little... There's little squishing to be had this time. Let's sit down. Devin brushes snow off the bench for them. Hey, I hope I'm not annoying you. Devin closes his eyes in guilt, taking a deep breath. No, I'm just worried about different things. I'm happy to be out here walking with you. It's good for the gut, anyway. No. Oh. Would they need a hat? <laughs> it's, for, it's for fashion. It's for fashion. It's for fashion. <laughs> There's no other explanation. It is for the look. That is all. <laughs> like, I get that Cammy Boy doesn't have a natural scarf, unlike Devon over here. Correct. Uh, but it is... <laughs> it is for the fashion. They have fur coats. They're fine. <laughs> They're probably wearing t-shirts underneath these. Yeah, like coats, actually. They don't need anymore. It's, it's for the fashion. <laughs> Cameron rolls his eyes as they sit down. I'm getting chubbier too, you know. It happens. I love your body. If you want to fool around tonight, I can have a closer look. Cameron leans uh, against Devin's shoulder. Only if I get to have a look at you too. <laughs> Deal. And if we deem each other to be too chubby, we can go on a diet or something. Devin finds it strange that Cameron is the one usually cheering him up now. The coyote is worried about him, and Devin wishes he wouldn't be. Still, it makes him feel warm inside, and he leans in to nuzzle Cameron. 
as he as he kisses his coyote, he realizes that this is a good moment in his life. A day he's uh he'll uh, look back on fondly. A day he'll look back on for comfort when uh, harder days inevitably arrive. Devin glances up at the uh, temple they're sitting across the street from. I always wondered what that golden dude with the stick is doing up there. It takes Cameron a few seconds to understand what Devin is talking about. The guy on top of the uh, Mormon temple? Uh, that's the angel Moroni? Moroni? I guess. Moroni. Uh, and he's holding a horn. He buried the gold plates. How do you know that? Some Mormon friends told me. Oh, Cody, the bull? Yeah. You thinking about converting? Mm, maybe if they ever become more okay with this. Cameron leans close to Devin again. Devin smiles, and they hold each other for a while. Something's on Cameron's mind, though, uh, but Devin knows to wait until the canine is ready. Devin, did you ever find what, what you were looking for? Devin immediately knows what Cameron's referring to, and it makes his stomach twist into knots. I'll only bring it up this once, but I keep thinking about why we went in the first place. I just wonder if you were able to, you know, figure stuff out. And Devin stares down at Cameron, and even though the coyote isn't intentionally pointing out Devin's cascade of failures into ca catastrophic failure, he feels it. Mm. Damn. That's... Just... I figured out that it doesn't matter, and it isn't worth finding out, and that I need to focus on us. Devin feels the sting and sting of tears in his eyes, but forces it back. I figured out I made a huge mistake and deeply hurt my friends. Brian hurt us. Cameron says it almost instantly. You just didn't uh, seem as happy or outgoing as you used to be. I know you're really busy with work and you just got your master's degree, which is so cool, but you seem... Hey, it's like you said, we change. It's not really a divide, right? It's like chapters in our, in our lives. We change with each one, and the last one we went through was brutal. Yeah, nothing stays the same. We don't fully recover, or become who we used to be, and still... Amazing. Uh, we always want to go back to how it used to be. Devin feels a... A deep twinge in his chest, thinking about uh, what life would be like now if he had just uh, made the right turn. It's like how they say you can never go home again, because home isn't just a place, it's the people, and it's at a certain time, and when it ends, it, it ends. You can never get it back. Baby, I love you so much, and I know it sounds dumb as hell, but I can be your home. I'll be around as long as you want me to be, so you can always go home. I always will. Sorry if I was sounding depressing. I honestly feel at home with you. You're the only home I've got, but you know what's weird? Hmm. I sense a lot from that temple, and I've sensed it in other spiritual places too, like those Buddhist shrines in, uh, Hulxia. Lucia? That's a that's a Kingdom Hearts name. Yeah, that is, that is absolutely a Kingdom Hearts name. It's a world that got norted. It's a whole world. And even those little shops where you see mediums and psychics, it feels like they're taking in energy and letting energy out too, like a portal. Huh. What do you think that means? I guess that there's hope for everyone. Lupita, Artie, you and me, and that maybe, instead of nothing, there's... And Devin, overwhelmed with grief, happiness, love, and loss, kisses Cameron. They kiss for a long time, and Devin desperately hopes Cameron is right. Because more than anything, he wants to start fresh again, and do it right.
For now, though, he's here with his husband, sitting and watching the snow fall silently, and that's okay. Because whether they disappear forever, or go somewhere else, it'll be together. Devin feels a little hope reignited in his chest. There might be something. There might be nothing. But he's content to wait and find out. But that will be a long ways away, he's sure. Not until there are 110, after all. <gasps> the end. There you go. That was really good. How how do you like Erches? That ending was very emotional. It's pretty cute. It was pretty good. I mean, just like the whole thing. Just the fucking going through all the the recovery, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very well depicted, very much mm -hmm. like well put together. Um, oh, I like I that like, guy's music a lot. Oh, he's very good. I like the the swerve, you know, the the view of the other Cameron with the other mm. Devin. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, the, that was the super other timeline. Wacky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where where Cameron got fucking decimated by the goddamn oh, shotgun. Let's go, let's go. Absolutely wrecked. Love um, that one. No, but that was crazy. But no, that was very cute. That was a great way to end, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's... Look, it's a it's a game in the Echoverse with a happy couple. Like, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, Chunter and... As um, a canon ending. Okay, there we go. So I was gonna say... Chunter and um, and TJ seem very happy. Together. <laughs> <laughs> they seem pretty darn happy they together. Seem at the so end. happy together. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And I guess if you want to count like a uh, kudzu, yeah, I I mean that one feels like yeah we've definitely talked that, about that. It that one's still my that favorite. Like feels, echo verse ending. It feels like the right ending, you know. Mm hmm. But good job, everybody, that yeah, made this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. these people. Very good. Yeah, I, I like the Echo Project games for the most part. Mm -hmm. like, they do, they're doing good work. You know, it's like here. all good, and then there's the Murdoch route. <laughs> 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 it's fine. Murdoch's route's fine. You're right. Murdoch's route is pretty good and fine. Now, if we could only remove Murdoch. <laughs> God. Oh, <laughs> no, the meme has to continue. It does. It has the to meme stay. has to continue. Fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> Man, like, I don't know. There's something just so. Because, mm. mm -hmm. like, we can't just go back to the start and do a new route of this game. No, no. It's like this is a one and done. There was no choices. No. Uh, it's just what you. Mm -hmm. I do like how this game has a very clear. We wanted to say something, yeah. and they just went and did it, and it was mostly a short experience. It was right. like a two, two and a half year release thing, and boy, right. that was fun. To but you know, you weren't waiting for multiple builds. Like, I mean, even like with Smoke Room, still, yeah, yeah, waiting on those on for as long as you do and stuff like that. But <laughs> right, right, just like a nice quick story, and what what they had to say was very good. Yeah, that yeah. is, it is a wonderful story. Like, you know, you want to recommend it to people and be like, yeah, you should experience this. It's pretty good. But also it's like, it's a gay furry rough. It's gay. It's a gay furry Ooh, Yeah, they, they got, got away. They got a new menu. This is cute. They got I like away. This one. I like this a lot. I like, I like this, this one. So like, much. it looks really good. It's not my favorite main menu mm -hmm. in an Echo game uh, because I'm a basic ass bitch. And of course, like the Echo of main course. menu is just, mwah. it's classic. <laughs> the nostalgia is very strong and very real it's wholesome mm -hmm. <laughs> and like in, in a similar way that this is wholesome right? yeah like uh it's it's good i hope smoke room gets a main menu post finishing a route mm -hmm. uh i hope i hope but yeah, yeah, I guess we'll wrap things up for this right. playthrough. Thanks for coming and hanging out with you. Yeah. Uh, tell us tell us what you all think of this game in the description. Tell me if you hate this game. 
Like, would love to know. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> why, though? It's because they, they don't like Cameron and Devin. Oh. They don't, that, like, is that, is that the they don't like Cameron and Devon. They don't right? like Cameron Ron and Devon. Oh, Cameron and Devon <laughs> with their buddy Arturo. <laughs> oh, my God. I love those guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear okay we're, we're, uh, i hope you've all enjoyed the playthrough and we'll see you guys around